try to order it, but it fell out of print like really fast and we just never got the copy. So there's there's that. Let's go look at the, the crane archives and see if there's just any Um, we're here at the SNEAB annual book fair in Northampton, Massachusetts, and we're meeting with the president of SNEAB. Peter Mace. What's the name of your business, Peter? Simply Beautiful, Beautifully Simple, and it's Peter Mace Books. Okay. Where uh, is your business located? I'm in Montague, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, a little bit north on the valley. Now, tell me a little bit about SNEAB. Uh, how long has it been around? Well, SNEAB uh, is an outgrowth of Mariab. Mariab is probably 30 years old or so. I'm wow. not you don't go back that far. designated historian, and I was not in Massachusetts when the organization was formed. There's still a few people around who were working Original in Original members, yeah. Peter Stern, probably. A few others. Uh, Jim Visbeck. Okay. Anyway, um, Marriott was Massachusetts and Rhode Island and Grand Books Hub. And I, was, I became president of that a while back. A few years back, um, you know, our demographics have changed a little bit. So I know a lot of dealers from Connecticut. And I know that Connecticut did not have an organization. One of their mem one of their dealers issued a directory every year, but he's so, sort of aging and becoming slightly inflamed. And just so getting a better light on I, I approached him. I said, "What do you think? Would you like to um, maybe combine and form a, an organization that had three states?" So anyway, we started whatever we had to do to uh, include Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. So now we're SNEAB, as you call it, SNEAB, whatever. Yeah, now you have two fairs a year. Which is the better of the two in terms of business? <laughs> is that a fair question? I love them both. No, that's, I will not uh, commit. Uh, okay. the, you know, they're both shows. They're both good shows. Our spring show is currently in Greater Boston. Uh, next year it'll be in Lexington. Our fall show has, for the last 11 years, been in Northampton. It's really great that you have it here in Northampton and talking to a few dealers. They've really enjoyed the mix of people that come here, the students. And I think, uh, you know, being in the five college area definitely gives you a population that you can um, appeal to, to, uh, yeah, they to like attract. It. Other than, and you did a good job of gray hair. You did a good job of publicity, Mr. Peter. Thank I you. saw your posters we, everywhere. Well, it's it's teamwork, Joe. Teamwork. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was all you. Um, now, what percentage of the members of SNEAB are open shops, and what percentage are dealing out of their house or office? I think the number of open shops is probably on the decrease. It, it, at this point, it may only be a quarter of the members. Wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I think um, we have a, a increasingly um, we have members who are selling basically online or catalog mm -hmm. or shows, whatever. How about you? What's your best outlet for selling? I, you know, I, I work about six different angles. Mm -hmm. What's your best website for selling? On? What do you think? I have my books listed on three websites. I have Abe, Libras, Amazon. Um, Abe and Amazon are both pretty active for me. Now, don't you do a lot with ephemera? I see a lot. I do of, a lot with ephemera. Do you, do, do you sell that on eBay or where do you? Sell that? You know, uh, one learns after some years that there are some limits to how how many ways you can do something, and you know. When I started selling on eBay, suddenly it took time away from selling in some of the other ways I had already developed. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to draw a line. So I have not sold on eBay, but eBay is a vast and very active market. Yeah, with that buy it now function, it's uh, people buy it now hated has the become auction somewhat function. definitive for eBay yeah. Yeah. since um, you know the, the a lot of the auction activity. Seem drove to, people seem crazy. To have died off. Yeah, people hated that. And uh, suddenly, you know, dealers were selling and getting wonderful results with competitive bidding. Suddenly, they were listing things and getting one bid. Yeah. So I think that led to buy it now becoming more the norm on eBay. One last question sure. related. Let's Where do you think the book business is headed? 
John, you know, if I look back 20 years, I'm like, who could have known what's happened? Right. Um, I see. I see a bright spot for it because I do think um, people are, are burned out at looking on screens. I see ebook sales are down. Uh, I think it's probably going to be some secondary gain stuff. from that. Yeah. You know, people will. People have. So, but I think it's all. I think so much. So much of this just marginalized. How much are we going to get back? Yeah. From that, is it ever going to be back to where we were? Probably no, no, we're going to be the ten percent. But, but I think you know there will be some movement away from that. No, but, he is. Yeah. He's being anyway, taken. I'm not going to hold you to it, Peter. Good. But good. Thanks for your time. <laughs> bye John, bye. I've got it. Hi, um, I'm John Riley. I'm here for SNEAB and also for Northampton Community Television. And can you tell me your name? I'm Nancy Craig. And what's the name of your business? I'm NCC Antiques. Really, a, really a original NCC and Nancy C. Craig. Oh, yeah, so it's your name. Yeah. What is your specialty? I uh, do a wide range of ephemera and a few books. Uh, but I like yeah, historical and that, documents was, and early you know, uh, material. I, I you have really a wide-ranging uh, collection here. It's really fascinating. Have you found that recently ephemera has become maybe more popular than, than books at uh, book fairs? Well, certainly for me it has, but I think there's a great increase in uh, ephemera. I've been doing uh, ephemera and paper and books for probably 20 or 30 years, and uh, I've tended more toward a family, and I think I see many more people doing that. I hear that from other book dealers, because what you have is unique. I mean, if you have a book, there's another hundred copies of it, but if you have, like, what you have there, what is that that you're holding? Oh, this right here is a wonderful, wonderful piece. It's a calligraphy, and if you can see, it's calligraphy of a swan. And actually, this is advertising for a teacher of calligraphy. Ah, oh, how neat. What year and, is this? Uh, you have to ask me that. I don't have a date on that one. Okay. But my guess would be in the uh, late 1800s. How did you get into the book business? Uh, I came into it by being in antiques. I like small antiques. And uh, just sort of followed my my uh, desires, the, what I liked. Yeah, you, you have a great taste. Do you collect See, anything I, yourself? I try to put in my uh, I'm a stamp collector. Okay. And uh, because I don't have time enough to really engage, and I collect things related to stamps and the post office. Neat. Sometimes I wish I had all the things I've sold. There are a lot of them. But yeah. hey, it's dangerous to be a dealer and a collector. You, you, you have to be able to let go of, of things. I, I managed to keep that separate. That's good for you. Most yeah. uh, how has the internet impacted what you do? Do you sell a lot on the internet? I don't sell on the internet. Uh, I probably should, but I don't. Uh, it has definitely impacted it because what you once thought was unique or nearly so or rare, right. now you find that there's a lot of them out there and they're creeping out from people's closets yeah, onto the internet. Do you find that there's forgeries? Are people uh, you know, the thing you know, to making these things? things yeah, nowadays? I mean, you can do high-quality digital prints of things and then try to fake things? The kind of things that I have, uh, I don't so really yeah, see too much of that happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's hard with autographs to know and that sort of thing. That's a good point, yeah. But uh, the early letters, I don't find, it's pretty easy to tell what is authentic paper and writing and There's a whole science to it, yeah. yeah. How many book fairs do you do a year? Oh, I don't know. A lot. As many as I can. How far do you travel to do book fairs? What's the farthest well, you'll go? I generally go? do pretty much New England. Uh, oh, okay. That's, that's okay. And, and she was very big on the American It's a great time to be out on the road. Did you like uh, visiting Northampton? Yes, I did. I took the uh, slower road or whatever to try to get more foliage in this yesterday when we came down. It's a great foliage here. It's a beautiful city and uh, we enjoy it very much. I always I always like it when I come here. Great. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, by the way, I have also seen some of the students come. You know what? And I've been very happy and warmly welcomed them. Well, I think that uh, SNEAB did a good job of publicizing the fair. And, I think they did. And we have five colleges here, so uh, I think you're right. I and I'm very happy to see the Hampshire and, and those people. Good. Well, thanks again for your time. By the way, Peter was so wonderful. He's here for me. I'm so glad to do it. I have a very dark corner here, and he loaned me these lights.
I'm uh, John Riley. I'm here at the annual SNEAB Book Fair in Northampton, Massachusetts, and I'm talking with Joe Phillips, Commonwealth Books, Boston, and uh, been a store in Boston now for a little over 20 years. You have other stores. You have one in New Orleans one as well. One in Dakota, New Orleans, and one in Sarasota, Florida. Oh, that is so cool. Um, how long have you been coming to the fair here in Northampton? I think about 15 years now. Uh -huh. Is this working out for you? Is this a pretty good fair? Or are there other fairs that you like better? What, how does this fit into oh, your schedule? For a regional fair, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. We, we enjoy it. We, and plus, this time of the year, we get to see the leaves and everything else. So yeah. It gets us out of the city for a day. And now, uh, I've been coming here so long, people know what I also buy. So people offer me a lot of New Orleans related materials and things that's like that. Really so cool. Yeah. It's always worth while. How is the book market in Boston? Uh, you're Boston. one of the last men standing there as far as an antiquarian book. Still pretty good. Yeah. We're down the street. There's the Bridal Bookshop, and there's us. Can't beat that. Within a three-minute walk of each other, yeah. so I think we both help each other. Yeah. And we're both good-sized stores. We track people from a long distance. I'm always amazed that out here in the Valley, I have a shop downtown, Gabriel yeah. Books. There are about 15 bookshops in the area, and people, how can they survive? You know. And I think they all feed off of each other. People will come and visit one, and the uh, visit all the other. Yeah. In the French Quarter, New Orleans, there's five shops within a five-minute walk from each other. Oh, neat. And because of that, it attracts people from all over the Gulf Coast to come there, knowing they can get a bunch of stores. How much time do you spend in New Orleans and Sarasota compared to Boston? Uh, I go down to each about five times a year, you know, from a week to ten days mm -hmm. or so. That's really cool. Now you have a publishing arm as well, and you publish some really very interesting books, books you don't see anywhere else. What is your uh, been focus? I've been publishing books now since 2006. We have about 65 books in print now. What is the title of, uh, uh, what's, uh, what is your it's publishing company called? Black Widow Press. Black Widow. Yes. Okay. The, the, our specialty is the Dada and Surrealist 20th Century French Poetry and Translation Bilingual Edition. Is that a personal interest of yours? It was a personal interest and kind of has expanded from there. Mm -hmm. We've branched out to American poetry, uh, a few things from the Spanish and even something from the Chinese now. So it's a little, a little of everything. You have a book here uh, that you have published. Could you hold it up and just oh, yeah. maybe tell us a little bit about it? Here's the founder of, uh, uh, not founder, yes. but... Was a Key Bobby member Richard of Surrealism. Tom. It's a book now used in a lot of schools. And it's a good anthology covering most of his career. And we've also published kind of the definitive biography of his as well, which is the Mark Palazzotti's. Uh, that's really cool. I guess that's a, a benefit of being unique, that yeah. it will be picked up by colleges. As, as it will. I and guess. I think because we have a weird little niche, we have a very large distributor who distributes us all around the world. Who so is that? Roman Littlefield Publishing Corp. Okay. Nice. And they, they keep us stocked up in the UK and the Canada and the South Pacific and all that. So. Well, great. We're very lucky. Yeah, are you uh, the editor uh, or the publisher? You're all. This is my are you, night job. All yes. things. <laughs> your night job. Considered, except for design, I have a very good designer who, who mm -hmm. works for us all the time. They're very handsome books. Well, thanks for your time, and you. um, we'll be seeing you. I'm going to well, take a little so quick much. pan around your your booth here. Uh, I'm John Riley. I'm here for SNEAB and Northampton Community Television. I'm at the annual SNEAB Book Fair in Northampton, uh, and I'm meeting with Barbara Smith, the one and only. Barbara, what is the name of your business? Um, I do it under two businesses, Barbara Smith Books, and I also am <laughs> co-owner of the Waitley Antiquarian Book Center, um, which is a bookstore in Beach <laughs> How long have you been in business? Uh, Hard to tell. I can't, can't remember back that far. <laughs> well, this you know, I've been doing it this way since 84, and then I, for four years, I was a bookseller down in Connecticut. Yeah. So that's a long time. How many book fairs do you do a year? Do you travel around a lot during book fairs? Yeah, I mainly travel on the East Coast, and I, I think we're down to just uh, maybe six or seven, and maybe that might include a couple antique shows. I've talked to some people who do like 20 or 30. I mean, it's like every you know, week there's someplace. Yeah. I used to, but we're doing less. Yeah. 
Um, we, um, we've been doing um, flea markets, the high-end flea markets and the low-end flea markets, and traveling you know, north of Boston, southern Connecticut, and those do... I've seen you well. at some of these flea markets, and what is it looks like uh, the angle that is good for you is like nobody else is doing what yeah, you do. Nobody else is it, selling books. I think that definitely helps. Yeah, and you sell ephemera and all the rest. Yeah, and we sell some antique stuff. I mean, yeah. I've asked a couple of dealers this already, and I think you'll probably confirm it. Is ephemera becoming a bigger part of the antiquarian trade as opposed to books? It is, and it's actually supporting us much more than books now. There's a certain feeling of, and which is true most of the time, of uniqueness to so much ephemera. It's just this one item, and it's very hard to find any others. Yeah. What type of ephemera do you specialize in? Trade cards, or is there any? You do it all. Let's see. We do it a lot of it. Um, if you looked around, maybe you'll get a picture. In a few minutes, you can get a sense of uh, different mm -hmm. things that we sell. We do the early postcards, but then, um, you know, I have a wonderful little brochure on the World's Fair from 65, which mm -hmm. shows the diamond, shows the yeah. wonderful graphics. Um, we're selling a lot of people who remember those guys. We'll take a look around your booth as you're talking. I've always liked coming to your booth because you have uh, food history, Oh, I do. And I do you're, you're really strong with children's books. Yeah, I do a lot with children's. You know, something like this is just, what's amazing when you get pieces like this, which are 50 years World old. World of tomorrow. They're in perfect condition. This is amazing. That's what I like. There's something like this. Um, we sell some floral things. Well, you know, what's really funny is, you know, paper is the most durable way to record information. People are finding out no. that CDs, DVDs, Cassettes, they're all deteriorating, and, and who knows about the cloud? What's going to happen? Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen in the when future. When it's all said and done, the paper's still going to be around. Well, let alone letters. We do a lot with letters and diaries. Mm -hmm. um, do people do letters much anymore? Do they save them and you know put them in little bows? Um, anyways, that's, you know, it's not that it's negative. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be different in the future about what's going to be saved. Yeah. Um, I think you know. that, you know, as you say, I think the unique things will still be valued. Yeah. Um, and I think that paper will be valued because I was talking to other people. The internet and the screen is a burnout. You know, you want something to hold. Yeah, one. It's yeah. real. And it makes, for me, a lot of the paper makes history come alive. Yeah. You know, having a label from a certain era or mm -hmm. some event. Or even you sell these little matchbox, matchbooks, you know, of famous places. It, yeah. makes, it makes places come alive. I, I like it. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Barbara. Thank Appreciate you, John. your time. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, I'm John Riley. I'm here with Northampton Community Television and SNEAB talking to some of the book dealers at the annual book fair. Uh, what is your name, young man? It's uh, Eugene Pulverick. What's the name of your business? Southpaw Books. Yeah. Where, where are you located? In uh, Conway, Mass. How long have you been there? I've been there for 28 years, but I've been a book dealer for 34. You were in Boston before? In Boston, in Boston, in Roxbury, yeah. In Roxbury, yeah. Um, how does this fair work for you in terms of uh, selling books? Are, are, are fairs a good outlet for you? Do they work? They're uh, fairly erratic, mm -hmm. but um, the show is very congenial, <clears throat> Yeah. and it's very easy to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this year it was very good. Just a random how do fairs fit into your marketing? Is the internet your main outlet? How, uh, how, how are you selling? The internet is a small portion. I small do, portion? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. I, I didn't realize that. I know people that, huh. that really do much on the internet, ultimately. Do you uh, sell a lot to uh, college libraries? Isn't that a, an outlet for you? Yeah, I do college libraries, collectors. I mm -hmm. do catalogs. And catalogs still work for you. They're yeah, good. They work some. Nothing <laughs> works as well <laughs> as it works. once did. <laughs> So, you got to have a, a multi-pronged approach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you like um, this year's fair? Is it any different? It's, it's, so, it's uh, pretty much always here at Smith Vogue, isn't it? It seems uh, livelier, and there seem to be more mm -hmm. younger people and I've a heard slightly that. diverse I've heard that. crowd in terms of uh, interest. I think Sneab did a really good job of publicizing this fair. I saw their posters everywhere, and, and apparently it, it panned out, so more people are here. Yeah, and uh, you know, I bring a wide range of things, even though I do specialize in... Ooh. Could you show us a couple things that you got here? Sure, this is uh, stuff in the Soviet Union, uh, Judaica, uh, literary material. 
Yeah. So you really aren't all that specialized. You do a Even wide I, range of things. Right. Though I do specialize in social reform. Right. That's Southpaw. Yeah. But I, you say that I bring everything. Great. Well, thanks for your time, Gene.